if you uh, were to start a gold project, you'd establish the, the level of gold in the, in the project, that you had sufficient resources, you'd uh, look at the metallurgy, you'd put the mine into development, you'd produce the gold, you'd put it on a plane and send it to the mint and be paid for it. And it wouldn't matter whether the gold mine was in Peninsular Malaysia or, or uh, Inner Mongolia in China, well it might matter in Inner Mongolia in China, but Mongolia or, or South America or Australia or Myanmar, the market's still well understood for the gold that you produce. But that's totally different for industrial minerals. Without a market, a specialised market, an industrial minerals deposit is merely a geological curiosity. You've got to be able to get the product to market. And the market will dictate the specifications required for the industrial mineral being produced. That is, you don't have the opportunity of saying, look, I've got this fantastic deposit of this, with these characteristics, if the market's not interested in, in that, it wants something that's finer or whiter or has greater reflectance or crushes to a, to a much finer um, uh, particle size. So the, the, the specifications are important and it's the market that, that, uh, that determines those specifications, not the producer. The producer has to meet the specifications. So how do, you, how do you arrive at those realistic specifications? So there's a series of questions that you can ask, and I take these series of questions from a paper that's in a recently produced uh, Aus Australasian Institute of Mining and Metallurgy monograph, monograph 30, um, best practice in mineral resource and ore reserve estimation. So these questions out of Border and Butt's paper are how do potential customers use the, the industrial mineral? So, if you've, got a, if you've got a deposit of uh, limestone, how do the users use that limestone? Where are the customers? So if I've, if I've uh, driven through Mongolia as I have and marveled at the, at the scree slopes of aggregate material and thought, wouldn't that be fantastic material as aggregate for concrete? Then I stop and think, where are the, where's the market for concrete? Well, it's here in Singapore, it's in Hong Kong, it's in Dubai, it's in Beijing. It's miles from, from uh, Western Mongolia, and there's no way you can transport that material to the customers. So it's, uh, it's a geological curiosity. What properties of the mineral are useful for customers? So we go back to the first question, uh, or the question we asked before. We need to understand how the customers will use the, the industrial mineral. What competing products are there? If you're producing something as filler for paper or for paint, there are alternative products that are available and so the price will be limited by the by the alternative products as well as the competing uh, producers of the same product what are the applicable legal and occupational health hazards a lot of a lot of industrial minerals do have uh, associated with them some occupational health hazards um, if you're producing granite for instance and you're sawing granite You'll end up with, uh, you can end up with fine silica in, in, the, uh, in the air, so you need to suppress that. There might be, uh, in Australia for instance, there's now uh, a lot of legal requirements around the use of asbestos, which we'll touch on a little bit later as well. So you need to understand those. How large is the market? What, what's the capacity of the market to absorb my, my product? And what is the price sensitivity to the market? It's no, there's no point looking up the current price of a product and saying that's what, I'm going to, that's what I'm going to receive for my product. You have to look at the sensitivity for a new entrant coming into the market. And that price is very much dependent on competition. And if established producers see a new player in the market, I'm sure they're not supposed to do this under competition laws in Australia, I don't know about here, but you can bet your bottom dollar they'll reduce the price significantly while the new, new player's trying to get a foothold so that it's more difficult for them to gain a foothold in the market. So they'll be looking at, at retaining their market share by lowering the price temporarily to make it difficult for new players. So all of that doesn't sound very much like a, a lesson on mining and, uh, and resources and geology, but it's the most significant thing. These two are the most significant things, the specifications of the product you're producing and the marketability of that, and where is the market. Peter, most of us, I suppose, are most accustomed to the gold mining sector um, because it gets a lot of attention and obviously because we've had minerals, oil and gas seminars here before discussing it. Can you maybe uh, pinpoint in, um, in a form of comparison 
the, the main things that as investors we need to be aware of between gold and industrial minerals. Let's start with the product itself. Well, uh, yes. So the, the product, the final product for gold is gold. Uh, depending on the on the purity, and you can you can sell gold as as uh, just gold. You can sell it as dore mixed with with silver, uh, and everybody knows the price, and and that's the the eventual outcome. And you will be able to find a processing route for your gold uh, uh, project, even if the gold's refractory to start with. You know, there's very few gold deposits that you can't you can't treat and produce gold at the end. So the significant difference is with industrial minerals, um, what you've got and what the market wants might not be able to be matched. Um, what you can produce might not be in demand by the market at the time. You produce gold, somebody will buy it. Sure, the price goes from 1700 to 1300 overnight, but that's a that's a, 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 a kick that's changed. But the, but at the least it's worth something, I suppose. Sorry? At least it's worth something. That's right, it's worth something. And I think that's the most significant difference between the two. You, produce, you start your gold project, you produce the gold, you'll be able to sell it at that market price. So as investors, particularly when there are companies that tell us what the price is that they're able to fetch for their graphite or their serpentine or their marble, we don't really have a frame of reference to understand whether the numbers that are being quoted are good numbers or not good numbers. Uh, in other words, whether they are sufficiently profitable in order to dig the stuff out of the ground. So again, what can you uh, say to help us understand how best to make that value judgment? Yes, so that that's, is an interesting question because as we've seen in the seminars here, most people have got a reasonable idea of how much the gold is worth and how much it costs to produce it. So they can they can do their own sums about that about the economics of that project. Whereas in the industrial minerals, you're you're relying on on the information that's provided to you, and uh, you know that that needs to be uh, adequate. And it needs to be able to be verified that it's correct. And then you've got to look at, well, so what, what is the processing cost? And, and what are the risks involved in that processing cost? So it's not just a matter of going from product, uh, from raw material to product. It's, it's the processing route, the cost of that processing, and the, and the risk which is higher in that processing than it normally is. So uh, for, uh, for uh, an ordinary investor, um, it may well be... Uh, interesting to invest in an established industrial minerals project, which has clearly demonstrated it has a market, because that will that will produce that should produce returns on an on, ongoing, steady basis, if that's what you're looking for. But to get into a into a project at the beginning, you need to have really a really good handle on all the all the the inputs to the processing route and the risks associated with that to make a, a sound judgment as to what the value is. So it's much more difficult. 